Hello, welcome to my review of the original Prusa i3 MK3 printer. Uh, this is my first 3D printer. I've never owned one before. I've never used one before. I don't even know that I've encountered uh, 3D printed parts before. So this was an entirely new experience for me. I built this from a kit. Um, the kit, I think, was on the order of like 750 bucks, something like that. Um, ordered it from Prague. Uh, one thing to be wary of, if you're in the U.S. and you have a Visa card, um, you might get hit with foreign transaction fee. Um, I wasn't thinking at all about it, and uh, I got hit with about a $20 fee. So if you do have um, a credit card that does not subject you to foreign transaction fees, uh, you might want to use one of those. Anyhow, this thing was a kit. It came in a, in a rather large box, a very well-packed box with individual components um, in individual cardboard boxes, the parts were bagged according to the steps in the instruction manual. The instruction manual itself is super nice, um, full color, pictures, well written. Um, there's also an online version of it that will have like comments from people who've worked on those steps, um, you know, problems they had or tips and stuff like that. Um, I use this like 99% of the time just the printed instructions. Um, I only consulted the online a couple times when I had, you know, needed some clarification on a step. But anyway, that's, it's, you know, it's nice to have uh, the printed manual. This is the assembly manual, so as you can see, just by the length of this thing, there's quite a bit to assembling the printer. Um, it took me about a day and a half. Um, wasn't necessarily solid work, you know, I had to watch the baby a little bit here and there, eat lunch, stuff like that. Uh, but basically, you know, budget yourself day, day and a half, two days. Uh, make sure you take your time putting it together. Uh, the only issue I had was with this um, extruded aluminum frame. I had a little bit of trouble getting it so it was not warped. Um, here I'll show a little inset of me struggling with that. I took it apart. I kind of permuted the parts, you know, left and right and maybe flipped them over and eventually got something that was within specification. When I was working through that issue, I decided just to go ahead and build the printer, even though I couldn't completely get the warp out of it. Um, and it came out within specifications. It does a self-check. It says it's a little bit skewed, but it still congratulated me on doing a good job and is able to compensate for any skew in the frame. Um, I did not contact Prusa support on that issue. Um, I hear Prusa support is excellent and, you know, might have sent me new parts if it turned out it was a part that was a problem. But I was kind of anxious to put it together, so I just forged forward with it. So after, you know, getting the aluminum frame together, the whole rest of the build went exactly according to plan. Um, this printer does use a lot of 3D printed parts, so like all of this orange um, is 3D printed. Um, there's also some black 3D printed parts. Occasionally, like, there's some black on there that holds the uh, power supply. There's a lot of black here in the extruder. So a lot of 3D printed parts. The 3D printed parts I thought were reasonably well made, um, reasonably precise. I didn't really have any issues putting them together. Um, as I said, the instructions are great. So the first thing I printed was this uh, Prusa logo. It comes on the SD card that comes with it. The G-code and stuff is already there. Uh, they give you a kilogram of uh, silver uh, PLA filament. Uh, so I just, you know, put in the PLA and after calibrating the machine and everything, told it to go ahead and do this and, uh, you know, it printed this thing out and, you know, I had expected, you know, endless fidgeting with it to get it to work because people say 3D printers are, you know, um, finicky devices, but really it, it came out acceptably well. I did a little bit of fine tuning with the Z level, so I printed, you know, a couple of them and I wrote on the back. This one was at 425Z, this one was at 350. Uh, the Live Z controls uh, how close the print head is to the surface on your, you know, initial layer. And you kind of want to get it squished out a bit, but not over squished. So it's kind of a matter of practice and trying a little bit, and you can dial it in just perfect on that. Um, after doing that, I printed um, this dog. This is Buddy the Dog, also on the SD card, printed in the Prusa Silver uh, PLA. Um, turned out great, I think. Uh, my daughter really likes playing with it. Um, I do kind of supervise her because I don't know the durability of the uh, 3D models. For example, my uh, 
my my pet dog got it and he put some tooth prints in it rather easily I think that's just kind of the nature of PLA is that it is a relatively um, soft light duty material but you know it printed this thing out it, it looks great it's detailed um, it's dog so silver is not my favorite color so I did actually pre-order some Amazon uh, Amazon basics purple PLA filament I had that on hand uh, somewhere around here there's another Prusa logo I printed in purple though I seem to have already uh, misplaced it um, but my next um, interesting print was this uh, purple frog um, he w again was right on the SD card um, and uh, I think it turned out great uh, purple frog uh, another one the baby likes to play with uh, under supervision of course um, yeah he's kinda neat um, so that got me through, you know, everything I wanted to print that was on the SD card. And I started looking on for models online. Um, there's a website called Thingiverse, um, and Thingiverse has lots of models. So the next thing I did is I uh, found this Flexorex. It's a little toy. It's a T-Rex dinosaur. Um, and the interesting thing is when it prints it, it prints it all linked together like this. You know what the hinges linked and the empty spaces inside and everything you just pop it off and it's good to go um, that just amazed me and uh, more than anything else this Flexorex if I show a friend or a relative this printer and say you know it, it printed this and they said yeah and then you had to put it all together I'm like no it just it just came out that way they're they're amazed by that so you know the Flexorex he turned out he turned out great I was I was uh, very impressed with that uh, so the next material I started to experiment with was called PETG. Um, here's an example Prusa logo in PETG. This is um, Amazon Basics uh, orange PETG. Um, you know, like most things, the first thing I print is Prusa logo to make sure I've got my print settings dialed in reasonably right. So PETG is a different material than the uh, purple and uh, silver PLA that I showed earlier. Um, PETG, you print at a slightly higher temperature. Um, it's got some better durability properties, it's, it's better for parts, and one of the things that I want to do, uh, use this printer for, is printing parts. Um, so one of the nice things about a 3D printer is you can print your own parts for the printer. So this orange spool holder up here is something I downloaded off the internet and printed, as is this uh, filament guide. So you download the plans off a Thingiverse, you put them in the slicer, you slice them, you print them, and you know, you've made your own parts for the printer. Um, you could also print all of these orange parts that came with it. You could print spares if you wanted to. You could, you could print spares for the uh, black PETG parts as well. But the goal was to really be able to print my own parts for my own project. So if you watch my channel, I do lots of electronic projects. Um, some of my projects are mounted cases. So here's a partially assembled uh, laser cut acrylic case. So I get my laser cut acrylic from Pinoco. Um, comes in big flat sheet. Um, and then you either bolt it together as I've done with these two pieces or you can glue it together with acrylic cement. Um, this particular case here I would eventually glue up a top bottom and the, and the other sides. It's got the front and the back but not the other pieces yet. So the problem with laser cut acrylic is you know you have to order it, it takes a week or two to get here, it costs you, um, you have to ship it. If you make a mistake then you've got to repeat the process all over again. Uh, a lot of disadvantages to doing this. And not to mention the whole mess in either gluing it or mechanically um, mechanically mounting all the pieces together. Whereas with um, the 3D printed, of course, you can just print the thing. You don't have to glue anything together. You can just print it the shape you want. So here's an example of a case. This is for a dual gang version of the same power supply as this one. And as you can see, you know, I 3D printed. I 3D printed the front. Then I 3D printed the outer case. I didn't have to glue anything together. I engineered in some mounting tabs. Um, yeah, that worked out great. This was the first design that I actually designed myself was this case right here. Um, here's an example. Uh, PETG piece that sort of reproduces this front panel that was on this laser cut. Um, I was able to take my uh, 2D drawings from uh, Inkscape that I used to do the laser cut and import it into uh, SketchUp Make and uh, do the 3D model. Then you just kind of um, pull it out into a three-dimensional shape. So that, that worked out cool. Um, lots of examples of PETG because that's what I'm currently working with. You know, here's uh, some structural pieces um, like the ones used in the spool holder. You know, they're very, they're very strong. 
So here's an example of a Raspberry Pi case uh, that I printed. I downloaded this one from Thingiverse. Comes apart into a couple pieces. Um, and it's going to mount a Raspberry Pi kind of on the back of the printer so that you can uh, talk to this thing over Wi Fi. Um, so, this is, you know, an example of something that you could find on Thingiverse here. And then, just for the heck of it, I also printed myself a 3D um, slug. And you kind of like the Flexorex. Um, it too it printed with these hinges built right into it. It's pretty cool. It amazes people when they see it and they said, You actually printed that? Yeah, I actually printed that. So that's a lot of talk about what I've done with the printer, uh, the kinds of things I've printed. So I guess I'll just close by saying you know, a few words about the quality of the printer itself. The kit went together well. Um, the thing works well. The default profiles and stuff, they printed my PETG and PLA stuff You know, with kind of the default settings. It all worked. It seems to be producing things that are dimensionally accurate. It, you know, it came with very good manuals. I've heard good things about the support. Uh, there seems to be a large open source community around it, and there's active, friendly forum people who can help you with it. So finally, I'm very happy with this 3D printer. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this, printing things that I would have formerly laser cut. I think um, over the course of a few years, it'll probably save money uh, in, in just replacing my laser cut orders alone. Plus, there's all of the additional value I'm going to get out of it by being able to do new and interesting things that I wasn't able to do previously. Would I recommend the Prusa printer over another printer? That's kind of hard to say because this is the first one I've owned. Um, it does seem to be very well thought out, well documented, well constructed. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.